Hello everyone, welcome back to the exotic tier list. It has been a very long time since we've done one of these, so we'll be recapping a lot of the higher quality exotics in the game right now. As usual, we're going to start with Titans, and we'll hit the next two classes shortly after. I feel like I changed the system that I use every single time we do one of these tier lists, but since we have so many exotics now, like 23 for the Titan, I'm going to be talking about what I think the top exotics are for each subclass and activity, and then any not mentioned will be covered after that. This tier list is a little bit less of a true tier list this time around because a full list of the exotics would be about a 30 minute video and that's way too long. Full disclosure, while I know how good each of the exotics are, I only have a handful. I have crowdsourced a lot of the clips in this video, so there may be a mix of PC and console clips. Thank you to those in my Discord server and in my clan who helped with this project. A reminder that the exotic tier list is about what I think the best exotics are in the game for certain activities and subclasses. Not the most fun, not the most interesting, not my favorite or your favorite. Something can be really interesting or good in a certain build, like Heart of Inmost Light, as we'll talk about, but that doesn't make it the best. My ratings may differ from yours and the communities. But first, we're going to at least talk about the new Forsaken exotics individually, starting with Ursa Furiosa. These gloves give you super energy depending on how much damage you end up blocking with your shield to the point where you can chain this super over and over and over again. This is especially notable in Crucible, where I've seen some insane chaining of supers because you don't really need to block a ton of damage to get the majority of your super back. The smarter people get about not shooting shields, the worse these gloves will get, but some people still really need to take the hint. If people don't shoot you back, then sure, you'll maybe get some free kills, but the point of these gloves is to bait people into shooting your shield, so the better you are at putting yourself in front of damage, the better these gloves will treat you. Just remember to go actually kill people too, unless you just want to give people weapons of light all the time, which is fine, I guess. In PvE, there aren't as many instances where blocking a ton of damage all at once is as impactful, although I will say that one of my new most satisfying things to do in the game is to block a Riven Fire Breath attack with a big shield. Cool to do? Sure. Is it a game-changing effect? Eh, not exactly, especially with Riven when there's giant pillars to block damage. One-Eyed Mask is the most broken exotic I think we've ever seen in PvP. Being shot at will mark the target that shot you, and killing the target will give you full health an overshield, and a slight damage boost. If you guys ever thought Wormhusk was rough, One-Eyed Mask is the next iteration. You get wall hacks on a target for what feels like entirely way too long, the ability to full heal whenever you get a kill on that target, the ability to two-tap with something like Ace of Spades when you have full bonuses active. This helm is absolutely amazing for PvP, and you don't even need to do anything to make it work either. It's all completely passive. You don't need to change anything about what you do. It is the sole reason I am doing decently in PvP right now. If I were to nerf this, I'd probably nerf how long a target is marked after they shot you because it feels like it just lasts an eternity. In PvE, the damage bonus you get isn't very high, so it's not like you're going to be keeping up a huge damage bonus or anything like that, although it is a very good defensive exotic if you have trouble staying alive. It also has some niche spots where it is good, but this is much more of a PvP exotic than a PvE one. Heart of Inmost Light is a good example of a fun-to-use exotic, but not exactly the best. Using abilities will enhance the other abilities that you have. Basically, you just pop a wall somewhere random to buff your melee or your grenade, or you can just punch something in the face because normal melee kills will also trigger the empowered effect. It's a very active use style exotic. You need to constantly think about your cooldowns and using abilities and whatnot. You need to mod your gear specifically for this exotic to really get the most out of it, which I think is actually a good thing. I like exotics that you need to build around. I like gear that you need to build around. We don't have enough of that in the game, building custom armor sets with certain builds and this and that. 
You can one-shot people with a sticky grenade in PvP while empowered, which is a nice throwback to the Destiny 1 days. And when it's Grenadier or Brawler for a modifier in PvE, then you can really go crazy. Although crazy will mean overkill damage on everything that isn't a boss, which is kind of pointless unless you're doing a high difficulty Nightfall, maybe, where you would want the damage bonuses. But overall, this isn't an exotic that is super top tier or anything like that. It's fun to make a crazy ability regen build based around this exotic to spam stuff, but you're not way better off with a build like that compared to just normal modding or other exotics or just normally shooting things in the face. Finally, Antaeus wards block projectiles when sliding and will restore some super energy when you block. These are very much a finesse exotic. These are not for PvE unless you're trying to do some joke level stuff. These are PvP focused for sure. Considering how dominant shotguns are right now, there is a lot of opportunity to block damage as long as you're aggressively moving around the map. This is not an exotic for a passive player. Combine these boots with a slide shot shotgun, good shotgun bonuses, and some super mods, and you may be drowning in super energy. Not to mention its defensive capabilities as well, used for escaping or getting around a corner a bit safer. But, again, this is an exotic that you will need to build around and you need to play around this exotic to get its maximum effect. If you're not willing to make that effort, or if it's not really your playstyle, you're not really going to get any value out of these. If you're into potentially reflecting a solo blade barrage back at that idiot hunter's face though, you might want to give these a chance. Learning the timing of when the shield comes up and goes down is the biggest factor to getting a grip on these boots. Overall, Titan Exotics are very good in Forsaken, but what about the best ones per subclass? Let's take a look. For Striker Titans, the best PvE exotic is still easily Insurmountable Skull Fort. Kills with Arc Melee abilities start health regen and restore your melee energy. This means that as long as you're killing stuff with your melee, you can go forever. Shoulder Charge and the new Death From Above Melee in the new Forsaken Tree will be your murder tools of choice, allowing for infinite Shoulder Charge and infinite killing power. Now, the only issue is that in higher level content, things hurt a bit more, but I think that unless you're doing really high level Nightfall scoring, like with super high handicaps, you will not have a problem utilizing this everywhere. I've used it in the raid with no issues at all. The only worrisome thing is making sure you actually hit targets and your teammates are not kill stealing because otherwise the entire exotic loses its purpose while your melee is on cooldown. For Sentinel Titans, the best PvE exotic is still the Doomfang Pauldrons. Ursa Furiosa are obviously in contention, but for PvE, I cannot think of many scenarios where having Ursas on doing a lot of shield blocking is more valuable than just actually killing things with Doomfangs. Again, it's fun to block a Riven Fire Breath attack, but you don't really need Ursas in order to do that. In Strikes, I'd rather just have the raw killing power and very long duration super than just the ability to block for a long time. For Sunbreaker Titans, the best PvE exotic is probably still Hallow Fire Heart. The ability regen is a bit more reminiscent of Destiny 1 Simmering Flames, which regened your abilities really quickly while you had your super. Hallow Fire Heart is not on that level, but it's very close, mainly enabling your ability to have Hammer Strike, aka Melting Point, at all important times, not to mention your grenade. The only negative is obviously you can't use your super, but when you do need to break out your super, it's not too painful of a process to get it back. Last Wish, fortunately or unfortunately, doesn't have too many times where you can do crazy super damage with your hammers, so holding on to your super isn't a big deal at all, although in Strikes and Nightfalls, your super may be requested a little bit more. However, as long as you're using your super around the same time that others are, you can just chain them and get your super back very easily. For PvP, I think the best overall exotic for all subclasses is One-Eyed Mask, without 
question. It is completely passive. It gives you wall hacks on targets to completely dominate 1v1 situations. It allows you to do really dumb stuff like charge into a group of enemies with shoulder charge and still come out the victor. It gives you tons of uptime because you don't need to wait to regen your health. It is subclass neutral, so any subclass can use it. I really don't know what else to say about it. For the average player, this helm is insane. For above average players, it is broken. Until this is nerfed or until something else is buffed, this is the Titan Exotic to use in PvP almost regardless of what you're doing. As for subclass neutral options for PvP, you also have Antaeus Wards, ACD Zero Feedback Fence, and Syntheseps. Antaeus Wards, because those are actually very scary in the right hands, but they're a much higher skill exotic than One-Eyed Mask, that's for sure. Feedback Fence, charging into a group of people with Hammer Strike, usually will get someone to melee you back, causing a chain reaction, killing everyone hit by the Melting Point debuff, assuming you're using Melting Point, and trust me when I say, that will never get old. Syntheseps are also still a thing, they never really got any worse from back in the day, other things just got buffed to make them contenders with Syntheseps. For PvP Striker Titans, Skullfort again is probably the play for unlimited shoulder charge action. Very rarely are you going to hit something and not kill them. I guess only against supers and overshields. Now, only shoulder charging is probably going to get you killed a whole lot due to all the shotguns, and it's very easy to tell when someone is only going to be shoulder charging for an entire match. Skullfort's kind of a dead giveaway, but that doesn't really seem to stop people from doing it, and still being successful with it. Eternal Warrior gives an overshield for Fist of Havoc. I don't think that's really enough because Fist of Havoc is only an okay super in the tree that has shoulder charge. For PvP Sentinels, Ursa Furiosa is the pick. When done correctly, or when playing against people who simply don't know that they shouldn't shoot your shield, you will be able to get many, many supers off, frustrating the hell out of the entire enemy team. Sure, you'll spend plenty of time blocking, but it's still possible to snag a bunch of kills and then instantly super again very shortly after, especially when modded and geared in the proper gear sets. For PvP Sunbreakers, you don't really have too much specifically linked to Sunbreaker. The only Sunbreaker-specific exotics that exist are Hallow Fire Heart, which is fine but not even close to One-Eyed Mask, and some other subclass neutral exotics. And then also Ashen Wake. Anyone know what Ashen Wake does? Of course not, because it's not that good. Fusion grenades explode instantly and are thrown faster. Big deal. So I guess technically the answer is Hallow Fire Heart, but I would never use Hallow Fire Heart over a subclass neutral exotic, especially One-Eyed Mask. However, hear me out for a second. Dune Marchers. So these give a similar result to Feedback Fence when running into a crowd of enemies, minus the need for someone to melee attack you back in order to kill everyone. You Hammer Strike, specifically Hammer Strike, a group of tightly clustered people. Dune Marchers will proc the AoE, assuming you were sprinting long enough, and if anyone gets hit by the Melting Point effect, they will die to the Dune Marcher AoE. The only problem is that this effect only works if you shoulder charge on the ground, because keeping speed in the air does not count as sprinting. Is this better overall than One-Eyed Mask? No. But what about Feedback Fence? It's pretty close, but to me the whole can't shoulder charge in mid-air and have the thing proc thing is a bit of a turnoff. This leaves the dozen other Titan Exotics left in the void. We'll start in the helm slot and go down. Eternal Warrior gives an overshield when you use Fist of Havoc. Now look, Fist of Havoc needs all the help it can get, but I think two overshields in a game of PvP, not really enough. You're better off switching to this helm when you're ready to super, and then switching back to whatever you were using before. Helm of Saint-14 has not been changed. Enemies are blinded in your Ward of Dawn. The problem is that no one uses Ward of Dawn, or very few people do. It's a very powerful effect for an ability that just does not get used. Kepri's Horn, still the same, solar damage kills recharge your barricade, which sends out a wave of fire damage similar to a thermite grenade. It's just not that impactful on moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. It might surprise some people in PvP every now and then, but that's about it. It needs more damage or more waves of fire, and even then I think it's just going to be outclassed. Mask of the Quiet One is somewhat viable, 
energy regen isn't terrible or anything, but other exotics have a greater impact. Moving to gloves, Aeon Safe. Not much needed to be said there. The Aeon series of exotics did not end up having an impact at all. Cool concept, just didn't materialize into anything worth using. Ashen Wake gives instantly exploding fusions and they are thrown faster. Great. Either make it affect all grenades, giving them bonus effects, or make the fusions way more powerful. Worm God Caress. Melee kills increase melee damage, and additional kills extend duration and increase effect. This is pretty potent on its own. It's just rare to go on a punching murder spree, and it's not really that efficient to do. It's fun to do, especially with Brawler, but it doesn't make you a more efficient killer, just a more efficient puncher. Moving to Chest Armor, Actium War Rig, still really potent when combined with Auto Rifles, but with all of the Auto Reload effects in the game, especially in PvE, you don't need this too badly, not to mention that reloading a gun isn't really too daunting of a task. Sure, if you want to bust out Sweet Business and the War Rig, knock yourself out, because it's really fun, but the tier list is not about fun, it's about the best. Armamentarium used to be a D1 staple for me in PvP, but I do not know how you're giving up one-eyed mask for this, and if you're a Striker Titan, you can already get double grenades from your subclass tree if you want them. Crest of Alpha Lupi seems to be used in more gimmicky ways for the orb generation in PvP, although the burst of health when popping a barrier is very solid as a defensive option. It's fine, just not top back. Lion Rampant is a movement-based exotic which I normally leave unjudged because they come down to personal preference a lot of the time. The standicides give an overshield when sprinting and hitting a target with shoulder charge gives you 50% of the energy back. Not really that vital in PvE, not terrible in the PvP sense though. They did get buffed to make the shield come up faster and you'll still be able to shoulder charge a lot but I think Skullfort still ends up taking the shoulder charge cake. And Peacekeepers are the ultimate in SMG technology. It's just unfortunate that SMGs are not that good right now with all of the time to kill changes that came in Forsaken. Even when SMGs were heavy contenders, I rarely saw Peacekeepers in PvP or PvE because it's not really worth wearing them for just one SMG, but using two SMGs wasn't ever really smart in anything remotely difficult in the game. Anyway, those are my thoughts on all of the Titan exotics in the game. Like I said, less of a tier list this time around. Warlocks, you guys are up next. We'll be talking your exotics soon with hunters to follow shortly after. If you enjoyed this video, a positive rating would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.